Okay, this will take us to the <coughs> end of Thomas Jefferson's term. Uh, we'll have our AMSCO Chapter 7 on Thursday. Okay, so Jefferson um, had to deal with other foreign policy dangers besides the pirates due to those Napoleonic the Napoleonic Wars, mainly between England and France, and Britain controlled, they had the largest navy, and they started seizing American ship, ships and taking American sailors, and this is going to be uh, an ongoing thing for the next seven, eight years. Um, they issue something called the Berlin Decree in 1806, and basically that says any ships that are trading with Britain would be attacked by the French. In other words, their enemy, the enemy my enemy is, well, that's not quite it, okay? But if, uh, they, if they, any ships going towards Britain, the French can stop and, and attack. Sorry, they, they end up blocking, uh, blockade anything coming into France. And then the Milan Decree is issued by Napoleon, and they say any ship neutral, friendly, or allied with Britain is considered a lawful prize if captured by the French. So this kind of puts um, uh, America between a rock and a hard place. You know, the British are, are stopping our ships, and now the French are stopping. And when they take, when they stop and they, they say, you're a deserter, now nobody's carrying a birth certificate or ID, and they needed sailors in the British Navy, and they are going to just take Americans. They say, uh, they estimate about 6,000 Americans are going to be taken by the British to serve on British ships uh, between 1808 and 1811. This was a, a, a real affront to Americans. The USS Chesapeake was just in sight of the Virginia coastline when it was attacked by a British ship. And they end up firing cannon into the ship, and three U.S. sailors are dead, a bunch are wounded, and then they're going to take four that they claim were deserters from the ship. Now, this is, you know, in sight of our coastline. So the American reaction was they were furious. Jefferson actually starts um, building his army and navy back up again because remember he had um, significantly downsized defenses. He actually probably could have declared war at that time and uh, the American people would have would have backed him up. But he 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 just didn't want war. Okay, so Jefferson says, what can I do? And what he comes up with is going to make people angry as well. So he says, no more British ships in our waters at all. Something called the Embargo Act. And the Embargo Act is basically no more trade. Um, he figured that we sent so much stuff over there that they would come begging us and say, we're really, really sorry and we won't, we won't stop your ships anymore. Well, didn't quite work out that way. I mean, Britain could go to South America, to Central America. They in, ended up just finding other sources for what they needed. And this is going to totally ruin our economy. Once again, Theodore Roosevelt is kind of stretching the Constitution a little bit. And he's, he's, he's hoping that this will, this will work, but it is going to be a disaster. The um, impact, especially in the New England area, uh, the, the merchants up there, the shipbuilders and so forth, just economic disaster. You can see here is the impact on trade here. The value of our exports is going to go down. Uh, imports. We aren't getting those either. So, you know, no trade whatsoever. This is a political cartoon that they did. Um, you can see it's embargo backwards. Oh, this cursed, oh, grab me embargo. And you, you can see them wanting to ship things and, and not being able to. The British ship here in the background. 
So again, of course, just like we did during the Revolutionary War, there's going to be uh, uh, people that are not going to follow this law. And the uh, New England people, remember Essex Juno, okay, uh, they're going to get together. And they actually are going to talk about seceding from the United States. But three days before Jefferson leaves the presidency, he withdraws the embargo. Now a new act is, is introduced. It's called the Non-Intercourse Act of 1809. And basically, okay, you can trade, just not with Britain and France. And he had underestimated the determination of the British to find other means, and he overestimated Europe's dependence on America. So what happens? France continues to seize American ships. England continues to seize American sailors. One good thing that came out of it is because we couldn't get finished goods from uh, anywhere else, we start opening up factories and erecting new factories. And this, this backfired on Jefferson because remember, he is an agrarian. And so exactly what he didn't want to happen, uh, making us an industrial society, happened because of his Embargo Act. Britain eventually was damaged by these effects. Uh, we're going to see a new uh, deal under Madison. So this is Jefferson's legacy. Uh, we have the expansion, and he foresees this wonderful agrarian empire as a result of the Louisiana Purchase. Um, he is very casual, as you saw in the Ed Puzzle. So, you know, people could come to these state dinners, sit wherever they wanted. He, um, he was in his bathroom quite often. Um, he is going to reduce our debt. It does go up again because of uh, some of the expenditures he was forced to do. The Federalists, are, we only, are only going to have one Federalist president, and that's John Adams, and the Federalists are going to turn into what we call the Whig Party by 1816, and he did keep us out of the war. So, uh, overall, failures. We do end up being an industrialized uh, society because of the Embargo Act. We have tariffs continued. A uh, little bit, uh, you know, vast improvements in transportation. It's, we're we're going to talk about the uh, roads that are going to be built to the west. Tons and tons of people come in from all over the world. And a good thing for America because we are built on that immigration. So this is just kind of a, a goofy memory person and it's a big late ham and it basically kind of covers the things that went on during Jefferson's pre presidency. So you can you can look that over and if it helps you remember, I like acronyms myself.